All right, so I've been getting a lot of questions about the last video I posted. I'm gonna try to answer a few of them and tell you my rationale for getting this stupid little Jeep. Um, the first question, why did you get a Gladiator? It's not a very good Jeep and it's also not a very good truck. Um, so I'll start with the first question there. Uh, I think it's a pretty decent Jeep. It's got Dana 44s. It's got a uh, good flexi suspension. It's got a solid front axle. It's got better steering than a lot of older Jeeps. Um, you know, it's still got all the cool features. The windshield folds down. Yes, I've already used that. The top comes off, the doors come off. I love that. As corny as it is, it is very fun to drive around on the street, something street legal. Um, that's basically a side-by-side -side with no windshield, so that's fun. You're not really legal without the windshield, but we'll ignore that part. Um, so I think it's a pretty good Jeep. It does all the Jeep things. It's fun, it's corny. It's got really bad wind noise, which is a Jeep thing. It looks like a Jeep. The looks, I love the look. I've always loved the look of the Gladiator ever since it came out. Um, the way that it's not a good Jeep is because it's got a long, 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 long wheelbase. So the breakover angle is pretty bad. Good thing I live in Florida and it's pretty flat and it's mostly going to be on pavement, right? Because if we're going to do any real off-roading, that's what Toyotas are for. This thing would fall apart if it went through 1% of what that truck has been through in its life. Um, there's no, no doubt about it. Okay, so is it a good truck? Well, depends what you mean by truck. It has a baby bed, which I hate baby beds and that's why I got the F-150 was because I wanted an 8-foot bed. But having a bed does let you do things like throw wood in it and put dirt bikes in it. As you can see, it's ready for dirt bikes. Um, but yeah, it's a tiny little bed and the foilers barely fit between here. It's really narrow uh, between here and here. But I proved with the one I rented from Avis that you can jam a Outlander 1000 Renegade in the back, uh, XMR. So that's good. Um, so yes, it's not a very good truck, but towing. Okay, so as you can see, there's a 3,000 pound trailer hooked up to it with a 4,300 pound tractor, with a 1,500 pound loader, with a 1,200 pound bush hog on it. I didn't do the math, but if you add that up, this thing's towing like 8,500, 9,000 pounds right now. Um, and yes, its towing capacity is 7,650 pounds. Um, I added it up wrong last time because I didn't realize the weight of the tractor didn't include the whole loader assembly, which is very heavy, that big beam down there, all that, yeah. So, it just towed this on the highway at 70 miles an hour, got about 10 miles per gallon, no swaying, um, braked pretty well. My shortened up hitch did good. I moved the ball from about here to here to help with the twisting force. Um, but it did did really well. And you're like, okay, well, why can this little Jeep tow so much? Number one, it has the best transmission in the world, the ZF eight-speed German transmission. Um, it has a long wheelbase. It's got a little bit stiffer springs and they gave it the wider axles from the Rubicon. So this is the max towing one. You can tell because it's got this little piece of plastic here to cover up the wider axles. And it actually tows pretty dang good. It tows better than any other V6 truck I have towed with. Um, everyone's like, why didn't you get the diesel? That's the next question I get asked. The diesel tows um, a max towing of 6,500 pounds, which is over a thousand pounds less than this truck. And it's more expensive. So why would I pay more money for something that can tow less is more expensive, which is the same as paying more money, um, but is slower. That's why I get the diesel. And everyone's like, why didn't you get the Rubicon? You, you love locking differentials. Well, as much as this Jeep is fun, I do not love its drivetrain. It's not a toy to drivetrain. Yeah, it's kind of beefy, but the drive shafts aren't huge. The, the U-joints, you know, they're pretty big, but they're not a toy to bare field and all that stuff. And I'm pretty sure that if I had this thing with lockers, I would destroy it, especially the front end. So. Um, mainly because of price, but also because it's a Jeep and I'm not going to be doing any really hardcore off-roading with it because it'll fall apart. I didn't get the Rubicon, but mostly because of price. So I got this out the door with tax and everything for about 40 grand, which is exactly what I paid for my F-150. And this is obviously way more off-road capable, way better approach and departure angles, etc. way better flex. Um, it does have the limited slip in the back because it's got the max tow package on it, and it's got the Jeep simulated LSD where it uses the brakes. And in most situations, on the stockish size tire, it's like the Talon I four-wheel drive, right? On the stockish size tires, that brake limited slip works really good, like the A-Track type stuff. Um, and I was really impressed with the Avis one I had off-road, and it didn't even have limited slip in the back. So um, that's why I didn't get the um, Rubicon, and I got this one, which is the Sport S uh, with max trailering. It does have the Rubicon wider, bigger axles. But all of the Gladiators have the Dana 44s. 
which is one of the reasons I really wanted the gliders when they came out, because with the JLs and the Wranglers, the only way to get the good axles was to get the uh, Rubicon package, and it's just not worth an extra 25% the value of the truck to get a front locker, in my opinion. Um, that's just like your opinion, man. It sure is. But it's just not worth it to me, right? Because um, I'm not going to do hardcore off-roading with it. I've got a lot of other excellent off-roady type toys. This is this is to do some mild off-roading with, you know, load it up with five people, a couple coolers full of beer and go cruise around. It's not for doing like hardcore shit. That being said, I'll probably snorkel it and put it on 35s. I already got some rims for it, but whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll be a hypocrite on that in a minute. Um, so that's why I got this one. And uh, I think it's a really good value. It came spec'd out pretty good. It's got everything I want, you know, power everything, manual transfer case shifter, Android auto, auto headlights, um, you built in, you know, ever. I'm trying to put some sound editing in there. So I'll get to that in a minute. But it's got a, a pretty nicely appointed interior. I like the interior. Um, it's pretty spacious. I got the hard top. That's a must because you want to go over 80 miles an hour without the sound like you're in a tent. These seats are real smart in the back. A ton of storage underneath them. I did a similar thing on the F-150, so I don't need a truck box in the bed. There's definitely no room in this little bed. And if you pull this strap, these both fold forward, and there's a ton more storage back here all the way across. So I'm pretty happy they maximize the storage. I just... Um, things I've upgraded on already, I put these step bars. They're pretty cheap, but they look a lot better, and it helps my mom get out of the truck, and it protects the Jeep from rocks and stuff getting kicked up against the bottom a little bit. Um... I got the floor mats coming, the factory floor mats from Mopar. They were pretty cheap, the rubber ones. And I'm doing a bunch of sound deadening because this is just thin right here, right? This is nothing but thin plastic. So I got the sound deadening from Boom Boom Mat Kit to do the whole soft top. I don't like looking at the white. This was my attempt at doing it myself. I just put some foam strips up here and some um, foam that's supposed to be, you know, acoustic rated. That did not do anything. I have a decibel meter. You'll see a whole video on this coming up. But trying a couple different solutions to cut down on the wind noise. So complaints. Number one complaint is the wind noise. Because this windshield folds down and there's not a lot of insulation in these pillars and there's seals all the way around it to allow it to fold down and it's a pretty steep angle, there's a ton of wind noise. I mean, this thing is not aerodynamic. It's basically, you know, people say a cow is more aerodynamic and I believe them. Um, so it's got a lot of wind noise above 65, 70s tolerable, 80s really loud. I'm talking 74 decibels loud. First complaint, second complaint, obviously bed is very small and very narrow. So two dirt bikes is good, a normal ATV is good. But you gotta put the tailgate down, which, which really annoys me, right? Don't like having my tailgate down if I can avoid it. The back suspension, even with the max trailering, squats pretty bad. You can see I'm about to kiss the bump stop right here. And it's got probably got about a thousand pounds of tongue weight, which is over with weight rated for, but whatever. Um, it's not on level ground either, the front tire. So when it's on totally level ground, it's not on the bump stops, but it is close. It tows well like this, but I eventually wanna put some stiffer rear springs. Um, when you're in four-wheel drive, if you try to drive on four-wheel drive on like this gravel or like hard packed sand, it's got some driveline backlash that you feel in four-wheel drive that you don't feel that kind of stuff with Toyotas. It just doesn't feel as quality or as durable. Um, so that, that's some of the things I don't like. Um, there is a picture going on the internet of someone who bent the frame on one of these doing some overlanding. And I'll tell you what happened there. They replaced the shocks with longer shocks and they did not reduce, um, did not increase their bump stops. So the shock was bottoming out right here and it buckled the frame because the shock was limiting up travel. And once the frames are to buckle there, it did bend, right? So yes, user error, um, idiot, but also kind of scary because I guarantee I could replace every shock on that truck with a steel girder and nothing would happen except your spine would disintegrate. I've actually jumped to that truck off of that big hill and landed on flat ground and there was no damage other than one of the mirrors falling off. Um, and it's got 100,000 miles on, it's built in 1997. So that's a little scary, um, but you know, this thing you can put 35s on its stock pretty much, just like the Land Cruiser, which I like the big wheel wells. Um, it's turning red is actually okay considering that's longer than an H1 military Hummer. I like these chunky taillights that stick off the side. I like the high clearance rear bumper. I like that the hitch is tucked up there tight. I like the recovery points. Um, I like a lot of things about it. I like how flexible the suspension is. I like that the sway bars don't hang down too far. Um, I love the interior. I'm a real big fan of it. The audio system is pretty good. Uh, it's all very intuitive. It's, it's better than a lot of the other Dodge products where you have to use a screen for everything. It does have buttons for everything you need buttons for. So you have all your climate controls with buttons. You don't have to rely on the touchscreen for that. That is excellent to me. Um, it's got manual mode when you go here and go over. That comes in a little handy. Um, I added a little cubby storage here so you can the passenger can set their phones there. Um, trailer brake controller is stupid. That's in the other video. But yeah, the roof cable comes off really easy. The doors come off really easy. I love all that. And uh, yeah, 
So what else? Um, what am I going to do to it? I'm probably going to put a set of 34s on the uh, Rubicon wheels I got. Probably like some uh, Coopers. I, remember, I was kind of thinking about LTBs, some TSLs, but probably just some Coopers, SSTs or something. And then I'll probably do like um, some heavy duty springs in the back. And then like maybe a one and a half. I'd like to do one and a half if I can find a lift that's that small, but probably have to do two inches all the way around. And I'm only really going to do that to get the heavy duty springs, but also to get a little more clearance on the center uh, for not bottoming out all the time. And I'm looking for a soft top um, just to have both tops for when I want to, you know, be a Jeep guy um, and do Jeep stuff because it's a Jeep thing. And I got it. I hate I'm part of that culture now. First of all, the worst thing about owning a Jeep is that in general, Jeep guys are the worst. I mean, you want to talk about, oh man. And actually, I'm on some Tacoma pages and Tacoma guys are pretty bad too. Um, the quality of people that do off-roading has just gone down so fast lately, especially in Florida. Um, but yeah, that, that's enough yapping. I'll put some underside videos of it so you can see some of the stuff I've noticed on it. I do want to put a skid plate on the transmission uh, oil pan. But yeah, it's a sweet little truck. And I do think it's a truck because it can tow and it's got a little bed. So it just barely makes it in the truck category. Here's the front axle on the Jeep. Sway bar mount right there, shock spring, lower control arm mount. There's a pumpkin and your steering stabilizer and that's your four wheel drive actuator that disengages that half of the axle so you don't spin your drive shaft on the highway. I see the knuckles of aluminum. Pretty good looking brakes. Tie rods are big. So unlike the F-150, you have steel oil pans, which is great. Uh, the exhaust doesn't hang down below the frame like my Toyota did. That's also great. Pretty good skid plates and stuff, except for up here, right in between the engine and transmission, where these transmission cooler lines are. There's a little bit exposed there. Um, I kind of like to get a skid plate on that. I'm not sure how it's got the wider axles. And uh, yeah, the reason that's important is because it actually doesn't just put a bigger offset wheel or a different knuckle. The axle tube is longer, which means when you steer, it keeps the tire away from the controller in the frame. See that controller was arched like that. In my opinion, that's Supermodel 35. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good under here. I didn't realize, maybe I'm just an idiot, but um, this Jeep has crossover steering. So instead of the drag link mounting to the tie rod that goes across the other wheel, it mounts to the knuckle. And that is why this drives better than the other Jeeps I've driven, and it all makes sense now. Um, this one does wander on the highway slightly, and it really shouldn't with the steering configuration. So I've got to figure out what's going on here, but that makes me real happy. Older Jeeps, this tire, uh, this drag link that goes to your power steering gearbox used to mount to here. And when you'd steer, it would twist this tie rod back and forth before it start moving the wheels. So that is very, very high fashion. A lot better view of the rear axle, a lot less going on over here. So four link, obviously, with a pan hard bar. Um, that's a pretty puny pan hard bar, but I guess that's fine. Uh, you can see you got a lot more up travel in the back than you do in the front. Um, this thing would probably ride a little better if you increase the front up travel. We're looking for breathers here, so there's your rear dip breather. It's snorkeled up very nicely. Up to here, and it's got a little filter cap kind of breather thingy on it. That's great. Spare tire, plenty of room for a bigger spare as well. Um, sway bar is uh, tucked up out of the way pretty good. I've seen a lot worse sway bar configurations. Also, unlike my F-150, everything is painted. I haven't seen anything rusting right off the lot like my F-150 had. Um, rear disc brakes, something uh, Tacoma has not figured out yet. Um, man, it's pretty pretty nice back here. So the drive shaft is uh, CV on both ends in the back, I think. I can't really see the front from this angle. Trans case is tucked up in there very nicely. Exhaust is pretty well protected. Um, it's a pretty good looking setup back here. Nice foam bump stops, coil springs. Uh, this is the max trailing one, so it's got some stiffer springs, so yeah, it does ride a little stiffer. Frame's got a lot of these big holes in it. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is, but it's reinforced. This hitch is not as beefy as I'd like it to be, and it is rated to tow 7,500 pounds. And I feel like if you snatch on this hitch a lot, you'd probably bend it, so I would not snatch on this hitch. I would snatch on the uh, either right here, it's one of these on both sides, um, closer to the frame, or snatch on the actual hook, because that hitch is not that beefy. I mean, it's about like my 1500 Silverado which bent, uh, by the way. So, yeah, but pretty nice back here. I'm really digging the layout. 